Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I just hit record, which I forgot to do when I was trying to record a video of Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom Triumphant Torment, so I just uploaded that as a community post. Before I start, this is the final 40 hours of uh, the initial campaign of Is This You graphic novel, and uh, so usually I do more videos in the last two days of a campaign since that's when interest ramps up. Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel is in demand and people are getting Expendables Go to Hell all over the world. The dog tags got delayed. They were supposed to get in like today, essentially. They'll be in on uh, January 3rd and then I'll send out the rest of the goodie bags. I'll send out the books that I'm autographing and then I'm going to send the books that Sylvester Stallone autographs to him. So uh, a lot of movement and Grand Bazaar. Final coloring, I mean, it was really just color tweaks. The coloring was done a while ago. And the script to be lettered are uh, complete. So yesterday I did a couple of polls. Oh, and this is what I have left on Comixology, and then I'm all caught up. I did a couple of polls about uh, lateness because suddenly, uh, out of nowhere essentially, lateness just dominated like every single... Uh, conversation about comics and it's like so i wanted to get more information i wanted to get you know the lay of the land if the expectations have truly changed i wanted to get some evidence that they had um i really don't want to run my comic book company like the dad in mary poppins <laughs> runs his household my slippers sherry and pipe are due at 602 consistent is the life i lead freaking love that song back in the day <laughs> but i don't want to run a comic book company like that it's, it's not funny it's not fun that's not my style i like to do weird esoteric indie artsy stuff like is this you like 499 like rock and roll ninja and sometimes you uh get you know hey uh why don't we just redo uh th this whole scene why don't we uh you know re-examine this why don't we do this like that's that's the kind of company i want to run that's the kind of comics I want to create these are the type of comics I would like to buy and uh, I don't <laughs> I don't want to be turned into a uh, stopwatch comics uh, but anyway so I did uh, a couple of polls and I, and I did a whole video about one of them but then some people are saying you need to ask you know more questions than this this is not scientific it's, it's a YouTube poll of course it's not scientific I'm trying to get a general lay of the land after observing and participating in crowdfunding you know for more than 10 years I mean most of that was just as you know a customer uh, I saw consistently consistent is the life I lead that one year is when people would really consider something to be late so I wanted to see if things had changed uh, so I did this poll uh, how do you feel about lateness when it comes to crowdfunding Wow, 4,300 people responded. 30% it's expected, shrug emoji, 53%, uh, and then unacceptable, 17%. Uh, so then people said, oh, you need, to, you need to get more information. So I said, what do you consider to be unacceptably late for a crowdfunding campaign? 3,000 people applied, or applied, replied. Um, one to three months, only six per, okay, so, only 6% of people considered one to three months late. I, I've mentioned this before. It was actually a, a Joe Glass uh, Kickstarter. It arrived um, at 6.02. Uh, no, it arrived. And I'm like, wow, uh, crowdfunding is not usually on time. And this is on time. That's amazing. But then when I looked, it was actually three months late. But three months seems like it's you know, on time when you're used to, you know, the, the typical scenario for crowdfunding. Uh, four to six months, uh, it jumps up to 19%. Uh, consider four to six months late. Seven to 12 months is 23%. And then uh, more than a year, 46% consider that to be unacceptably late. The way I interpret, oh, and then 7% say any lateness is unacceptable, even, you know, a single day. So the way I'm looking at this is I'm <coughs> I'm adding up 7 to 6. That's 13%. That goes from any lateness up until 3 months. So 13% I was like, okay, so that's, you know, it's it's not any kind of majority, but it's noticeable. This is where I see 4 to 6. 
So you do 7 plus 6 plus 19. Oh, God. What is that? 34%. So that's a third. By the time you get to six months, a third of the people consider it to be unacceptably late. So that tells me two things. Do not ever go more than six months late. And you really want to get it below three. Now, of course, there's never an intention to make anything late. But these are not major corporations. It's just me. Um, some people say, why don't you hire an employee? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> it's uh, the comic book industry is not filled with people that are very dependable. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of childishness. There's a lot of infighting. There's a lot of bickering. There's a lot of holding grudges. So the type of person that I would want would not be in comics generally if I if I needed some sort of, you know, assistant. Um, and it just feels like just drama just percolates out of every pore of the comic book industry. So it's like, uh, what is that line from Con Air? There's two people I trust. One of them's me. The other's not you. Uh, the other thing is I don't I don't quite have the volume to justify a full time employee. And being someone that was a part time employee, it sucks because it kind of sucks the same way the National Guard sucks. You got to keep yourself in shape. You know, you got to do all these other things, but you're getting very low pay. Um, uh, for and then of course to teach someone how to do my job would be more time than it would take to just get caught up. Um, so uh, this one was very this again this one was more informative because this one said like what are what is going to be an uncomfortable amount of backers thinking that you are late and to me that's past six months so you never want to be more, more than six months. Um, and again, I contend, I do not think the game has changed that much. Uh, if some people want to concentrate on, on not being late and that's their, I don't know if I call it primary thing. That's the thing they seem to talk about the most. That's a personal choice for them. I don't consider that to be the norm for crowdfunding. And I don't have any evidence that the crowdfunding landscape and expectations have changed that much. Now, if, if it did, if it did. If 75% of people were saying three months is considered unreasonably late, I would have to adjust to that. But these polls don't indicate that much has changed in the last 10 plus years of crowdfunding. People understand that these are not, you know, Marvel. I don't have 100 employees. I don't have, you know, editors with dozens of years of decades of experience. I don't have tribal knowledge in a company going back to the 19 freaking 30s. It's me starting this company three or four years ago. Um, so then uh, here's another one. Here's a slightly different question. This doesn't have to do with being late on estimated shipping date. How long after a campaign concludes do you think is un unreasonably long to wait? Because, you know, technically you could pad this. You could have a book almost done and say the due date was a year from now. And then you're like, oh, I'm 10 months early. Um, uh, so even like the lateness, you see, the estimated shipping date, and that's what it is. It says estimated shipping date. Let's, let's just go show right here on uh, estimated shipping, April 2022, which, you know, we're probably going to beat by a month or two. Um, but then I could set it for December of 2022 and then brag for, you know, in a bunch of videos. It's like, we're 10 months early. This is the new gold standard for the industry. Um, but uh, so I then after, you know, uh, doing the second poll, I was like, okay, so this is more about it is. How long after the campaign ends do you consider it to be an, an unreasonably long time to wait? So um, 5% say books should ship immediately after a campaign ends, to which I ask, why are you not just putting it on Amazon? If you have determined that the new gold standard for the industry is immediate fulfillment, why, why do you even have a Kickstarter or Indiegogo just put it on Amazon to ship a couple thousand books to an Amazon warehouse and then they fulfill it and it's, it's just Amazon because it's not as exciting when it's Amazon. Amazon is, is, is a very, you know, a large ocean and you're just dropping a little pebble in there. Crowdfunding is exciting and crowdfunding is not about having a fully complete product and then just shipping it. That's what Amazon is for. Uh, crowdfunding is for... Uh, building excitement and getting enough money to get you across the finish line. Uh, so this one says, so again, this one is not having to do with 
estimated shipping dates and being, quote, late, which is fairly arbitrary. But after the objective date of the end of the campaign, what is unreasonably long to wait to get your product? So 5% said it should ship immediately, basically Amazon. 11% said one to three months. So you add those two together, that's 16%. It's like, okay, that's, that's something, but it's not really going to sway me. Then you do four to six months, and then you get another 24%. So you're going 24, 11, 35, don't screw this up, 35. So once you get to six months, it's 40% of people uh, that are saying, you know, like, this, you need to, you know, obviously, 40% is saying even six months, or 24% is even saying four months is too late. I almost tripped myself up there. I got a little confused with all the numbers. <laughs> but what I'm seeing right here is that estimated shipping dates are now expected to be within three months of the end of the campaign. Um, we got basically uh, one more for is this you it's four months but i think i'm going to you know hit that so if you if things so things have shifted people generally expect to get their comics sooner than they used to uh egregiously late is still considered to be more than a year but also i would say significantly late is uh six months the, the best information I got from this that does indicate <clears throat> some kind of change in expectations is the idea that, um, uh, because this says four to six, but really it means, you know, three months in one day. Uh, so once you get to three months in one day, 40% of your backers are like, this is as far as, as, as we can go. You know what I mean? So, um, the goal for me is to be close enough to being done that I can fulfill within three months. And then if stuff does get late, you don't want to be more than, you might say, six months late. No, no, three months late. It really looks like a campaign ends the longest anyone wants to get it is six months. So knowing that, I am definitely going to make sure that I'm much farther. I would say minimum 75% done with a book, but honestly, probably more like 85% to 90 complete by the time that you um, launch the uh, campaign. Uh, and uh, I think that's my new standard. Um, I think that's a reasonable standard. I think that uh, you can still have fun and have, you know, Oh, you know, what if we redid this final scene? Like even with Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar, there's like a first five pages for Jawbreaker's Forever. And I was like, what if the first five pages of Jawbreaker's Forever was the last five pages of Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar? You know, I have that option uh, to do stuff like that. I think I'm going to just keep it um, uh, separate. But uh, I'm always going to want to have room to grow and be creative. And a lot of being creative is saying, hey, this is good. I want it to be better than good. So just take all of this out. We're going to redo this. We're going to cut this out. And um, I think that's a reasonable um, new normal for crowdfunding. Uh, the new normal being that it should fulfill within three months of the end of the campaign. And if you're late, you should be at most three months late. Anything above three months late, people are just going to... And that also has to do with, I believe, chargebacks. On credit cards, you can do chargeback for six months after the purchase. Uh, so um, I really appreciate the, geez, how many people? Well, I'm sure I'm sure it was the same. Let's say between all all of them, maybe five thousand separate people, and that that's amazing. I mean, people, real companies, quote unquote, they pay thousands to tens of thousands of dollars to get information that's probably about as reliable as this. I did see some ways to dispel this. They're like, oh, this is just as fans. Never said that. And you're not limited to being a fan to, to vote on this. And they were saying there's some sort of confirmation. 
I'm asking a question. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you can get confirmation bias unless it's like an egregiously, you know, uh, maliciously worded. Um, uh, but I did three of them to get a better. And th then another one, I'm probably going to run this one tomorrow is, do you really care about stretch goals? Honestly, I throw them away. I mean, they're nice. I open up, I go, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. And I just throw it all away. And I've gotten, well, unscientifically, several people in DMs and emails saying, like, do a poll about stretch goals because I don't give a fuck about them. So there might be an option where it's like, if you don't want stretch goals, that can ship like a month later. And then if you do want the stretch goals, that ha we have to, you know, order them from multiple different vendors and that's going to take more time and then it has to be packaged up into one SKU so I don't get, you know, hit for a dollar thirty for every trading card and bookmark and it destroys all the profit. So that might be an option on some. Is that um, the other one I'm going to do an option. I have to check if this is possible. I don't think, I actually, I don't think you can do things for zero dollars. But um, some people were asking about um, uh, tracking. And I have different reasons why I haven't done tracking. We, we had tracking on uh, 499. Basically, nobody cared, nobody used it because it wasn't late. Tracking is mainly used when things are really late. Um, so if you're not late, tracking, I mean, you get that nice email where it says like, hey, your book's on the way. You go, oh, nice. But I can do an update. But some people, they really, really want tracking and they feel like it's, you know, an affront. And it might be literally like if I could do it like where if it was an add on for zero dollars, I'd do like, do you want tracking? Because I think most people don't care. I think 90 percent of people don't care. And for an on time or minimally late, you know, one to three months, I think 99 percent of people will never even check the tracking ever. It's when it gets really late. So do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of a moot point. If you're not really late, nobody really cares about the tracking anyway. And it is an expense. I think the last quote I got for my fulfillment center to handle all the tracking and, you know, send out the emails and all that. It was like $900. And I was like, it, it doesn't feel like more than like maybe like 10 people ask about that. So it's like, it's like I got to pay $90 per person that really cares about tracking. So uh, it might be a situation where we, uh, we just do it like, Hey, if you really care about tracking, if you want the book with tracking, here, click on this link. If you don't care, click on the regular link. Or I might even make it a secret link. And it's like, if you really, really care, uh, we'll do that. But anyway, I really appreciate uh, answering. Um, uh, I don't, I well, I don't want to. I'm not going to be pressured <laughs> into running a company that I wouldn't enjoy. Um, I do not want to run this like a military operation. I'm an artist, which means I'm going to be flaky. I'm going to be morose. I'm going to be emotional. I'm going to constantly second guess everything and want to change things. Add OCD on top of that. And I'm never uh, going to run Splato like uh, the dad from Mary Poppins <laughs> runs his household. Isn't the whole point of Mary Poppins that you shouldn't be locked into these rigid, you know, structures and habit, whatever. So just that's me. I'm the Mary Poppins of comics. There we go. So anyway... Is this you graphic novel fun, funky, weird, narwhal and I? It's it's this immortal dealing with cancel culture. You just imagine you're gonna live forever and you just got canceled. Even freaking suicide isn't a freaking exit strategy. So it's immortal basically trying to to flip the script on uh, being canceled, and that's a lot of fun. Rock and roll ninja. This one, it's really hard to summarize. It's it's Matt Barr doing amazing art on a story, uh, and. Uh, that uh, it's basically based on, I was trying to describe Larry Hama to someone that doesn't read comics and I described him as being a rock and roll ninja. So I was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. So it's a lot of, you know, influences of, uh, you know, the ninja storylines from G.I. Joe. Look at this art, it's so good. Even like logos, he's just, Matt is just good at everything. This is some of the inspiration. So I will repitch uh, this in the, uh, new year so anyway uh now i'm going to go uh read and review these and then see if i can get this uh i think this is like 15 issues but i remember them being like quick read there's something about being a good, really good writer like grant morrison that even kind of like dense issues they just 
fly by. But anyway, yeah, so we got 40 hours left for Is This You initial campaign. Go check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye.